The Backbone Trail starts in an upper middle class neighborhood here in Los Angeles. Climbs into the Santa Monica Mountains, passes through woodlands, goes past amazing rock formations. And you end at the ocean. The Backbone Trail is unusual for through hikes because it's really not intended for backpacking. You could do that, but campsites are scarce and water can be even harder to find. Instead, you do it as a series of car shuttles, hiking the seven sections one day at a time. Now, by all accounts, the total distance on this first segment is 11.5 miles, although my GPS clocked in at 13. What can I say? Your mileage may vary. Another thing to keep in mind is that the car shuttle involves a lot of driving in LA traffic, which can take a good chunk from your hiking and getting home time. Just something else to plan for. The first segment runs between Will Rogers State Historical Park and Trippet Ranch in Topanga Canyon. Directions to either end are in the description. Start by entering Will Rogers Park Walk to the paved service road that goes off to the left to the base of the hills. At the stables, look left for the road at the sign trailhead. You are now on the Backbone Trail. After about a mile, you'll come to a sign on the right directing you to Inspiration Point. So if the name intrigues you, hike about a tenth of a mile for this. If nothing else, this illustrates a theme for the next few days, how hiking through the Santa Monica Mountains is a blend of wilderness and urban development. Back at the sign, look left across the trail to a path that leads a few steps later to a backbone trail sign. From here, the uphill route doesn't let up much until you get to Hub Junction, about seven miles away. As you climb, you'll cross this bridge over a narrow canyon and no doubt lose a few of the day hikers. You're now on Rogers Road Trail, where you leave the city views and enter what might feel like untouched wilderness. Keep in mind, the trail is also popular with cyclists, especially on the weekend. I recommend welcoming your two-wheeled fellow explorers by pulling to the side and letting them pass. The climb finally lets up at this junction at the Temescal Ridge Road, where you turn right. And after a few minutes of walking, you come to this, Hub Junction, and you have a choice from here. Now look to your left, you'll see two roads of equal length to Eagle Junction. I recommend the right-hand option for its access to this jutting prow of sandstone known as Eagle Rock. It's a good place to take a rest, or maybe practice your rock scrambling skills. And, if you're curious, the other road circles around the other side of the rocks, but far below. You will surely notice how this area has been incinerated. The Palisades fire blasted through here for 12 days in 2021 and burned 1,200 acres. We now have the post-inferno combo of blackened trees and green stuff popping out all around.
Still in the burn area, look for this trail junction on the right below Eagle Rock, which heads down through Mush Meadow. As you descend, you'll forget there ever was a fire. Near the bottom of the descent, you'll pass on the left Mush Camp, which features a restroom and running water. This is the only legal place in the area where you can camp overnight. It can be a quiet, cozy place. After one mile, you'll reach this road. Turn left and continue to Tripit Ranch and your car. Where I'm at is in the neighborhood of 2,400 feet. Sea level isn't that far away, the ocean's just over there, which is where these fossils once sat some 24 million years ago, before the Santa Monica Mountains existed, at a time when the future Los Angeles was under the ocean. And then the mountains started growing, eventually reaching three times higher than they are today. And after getting to about, oh, 10,000 feet in elevation, erosion started whittling the back down. And all the time, these shells were taking a slow elevator ride to where they are now. So just for the fun of it, as you hike this section, imagine a backbone trail a few million years ago, when this spot might have been as high as 7,000 feet. The climb to get here won't seem quite so bad. Section 2 starts at Trippet Ranch and ends 6.4 miles later at the lowest UN Overlook. You can expect a bit of sweat on this one. It has more than 2,500 feet of elevation gain and loss, mostly gain. From the Trippet Ranch parking lot, walk toward the restrooms in this display. Now you'll be on the Mush Trail for, oh, maybe 100 feet before you come to the Dead Horse Trail on your left. The sign doesn't say so, but this is also the next section of the backbone. The way is mostly downhill, losing about 500 feet, and mostly easy to follow. However, the path does intersect several other trails, not all of them signed. So follow this vague rule. Choose the widest, most established trail, and the one that's descending. After 1.3 miles, you'll reach this parking lot and restrooms. So this parking lot is known as Dead Horse. Seems a deceased equine was found here when the trail was originally being built. I guess as names go, it's pretty colorful. From here, veer right toward the restrooms and continue on the trail. After a few minutes of walking, you'll come to possibly the most dangerous task on the entire Backbone Trail, crossing Topanga Canyon Road. Be extra careful. And remember, you can't outrun a car going 50 miles an hour. After crossing, look to your left for Greenleaf Canyon Road. Turn right here and walk the asphalt for a minute. On the left, the sign backbone trail continues and climbs steeply. Again, there are several unmarked junctions, and again, the general rule is pick the widest, most established path. Now, like many backbone segments, this one is infested with poison oak. Look for vines with three leaves clustered together and stay clear of them. When you come to this small post at an otherwise unmarked trail, continue straight and go past this small water tank. A few steps later, you'll come to a junction where you turn left. The backbone drops to a private paved road. Turn right toward this water tank and find the path along the fence. This will take you to Old Topanga Canyon Road, which you cross. The trail drops to a creek and you are now in Hondo Canyon. Ahead, more than 1,500 feet of climbing over the course of 3.3 miles. It could be worse. Hondo Canyon is mostly shaded, even lush in places. 
Trust me, it's not so bad. And look on the bright side. There aren't any distracting side trails to confuse you. Once you reach the top of the canyon, there's still more climbing as you power up above Saddle Peak Road. Now at this point, the path is called Fossil Ridge, and 0.4 miles from here, look behind you and to the right. You'll find these fossil remnants from an ancient ocean. And who knows, maybe in a few million years after these mountains erode away, they'll end up back in the sea. About a quarter mile later, you'll come to the Topanga Tower Motorway. So from here, you have a choice. You can either turn left that way and go about a tenth of a mile to your car, or you can turn right and walk hmm, about a mile to Topanga Lookout, where you'll find an homage to spray paint and the anarchistic art it inspired. What goes up must go down. Ha, except for this section of the Backbone Trail. It's almost all down. And that's not an easy thing. It loses 3,000 feet in nearly five miles. There's a lot of body parts involved there. Quadriceps, your hamstrings, hips, knees, they're all stressed. So maybe instead of pounding out this descent as if gravity is doing all the work, relax. Enjoy the chaparral environment and the wildflowers. I guarantee you, you're gonna enjoy the hike more, and in the next morning, you'll definitely appreciate it. The hike begins near the Lois Ewan Overlook and ends about seven miles on Payuma Road. Directions to the trailheads are in the description. To start, walk down from the Overlook on Stunt Road about 500 feet to the signed trailhead on your left and start up. You know, this is about the only uphill you're going to have, so savor the exertion while you can. As with so many other places on the backbone, the start has its share of vague trail junctions. When you come to the tank, head for it, swing past the gate, and continue up the trail at the end of the asphalt road. Then, a short distance later at this junction, a total of one mile since you've started, you have a choice. Veer right to continue on the main trail, or detour for a short hike to the top of Saddle Peak, which would be the highest point on the trip. The rest is downhill. Back on the trail, you'll pass sedimentary sandstone formed some 16 million years ago when this was once the ocean floor. Weird knobs and spires spring out of the chaparral-covered slopes. The tangle is so daunting, you start to wonder how anyone could hack their way through it. Now, one of the contributors to that tangle is this, Manzanita. I can tell you from personal experience, almost impossible to bushwhack through. Now, you can spot Manzanita by its red bark, tangle of branches, and the small oval leaves. If you happen to be coming through here in the spring, these bushes might have red berries on them. They're edible. In fact, you might take a cue from the local Chumash natives who used it for cider, and then brush their teeth with the leaves. After about two miles, there's a spur trail to Stunt Road, and that's the last junction for two and a half miles. From here, it's a wonderful mindless romp down a pleasant path. And just remember to slow down 
and go easy on your knees. After a switchbacky descent into Malibu Canyon, we hit Payuma Road. Veer left as you cross the road and find the marked trailhead. It's an easy, meandering two miles. Now the only hitch comes near the end when the trail crosses a private driveway. Where it takes up after that isn't obvious. Go past this structure and the unmarked path appears about 75 feet later. Descend for a few minutes, cross a creek, and step up to a wide shoulder along Payuma Road. Turn left and your car is parked about a quarter mile away. You know, I don't think I've ever met a sandstone outcropping I didn't like. Just look at this sucker. Eroded into wonderful curves, it's eye candy for the hiker. Your shoes stick to the gritty surface. It's just a highly entertaining rock. You know, while this backbone trail section has gobsmacking views and pleasant canyon floors, my bet is the sandstone you'll remember the most. We start at this parking lot off Malibu Canyon Road. The 9.3 mile hike ends at Latigo Canyon Road. Directions for all this is in the description. Just beyond the trailhead, hidden from the road, is a bathroom with running water, a convenience not to be seen again for 17 miles. From here, the trail jets up the mountainside as if no one ever heard of switchbacks or erosion control and comes out on the Mesa Peak Tractor Way. Turn left, uphill. There will be a lot more uphill, four miles worth as you ascend out of Malibu Canyon. The tractor way turns into Mesa Peak Motorway. Keep climbing as you traverse the Castro Crest Ridgeline. As is the case along much of the backbone, evidence of past fires spring up periodically. The shadeless tread eventually eases with a few down spots for catching your breath. After more than four miles, the sandstone blobs appear. As with any sedimentary rocks, these are the eroded but not defeated remnants of the seafloor that once existed here before the mountains rose up. The age of these distorted brutes is between 12 to 16 million years. The geology lesson continues as you reach the Castro Crest and the unmarked trail veers to the right at this post. The next half mile climbs up and over the sandstone slopes. Now about halfway, Take a moment to look back at this, known as Elephant Rock, for what I think are obvious reasons. The trail takes you to this parking area. Now, if you discover you were so distracted by the rocks you missed the trail junction, eh, don't worry. You can continue on the Mesa Peak Motorway to Corral Canyon Road. Turn right and walk up to a parking area at the end of the paved road. At the parking area, look for the signed trailhead on the left, which descends into Solstice Canyon. The route winds in and out of gullies before finding the canyon floor and a pleasant walk through the chaparral habitat. Depending on the season, you might encounter a dozen or more creek crossings, the headwaters of Solstice Canyon, or you'll just stomp over a few exposed rocks. 
The backbone climbs out of the canyon and hits Newton Motorway at a broad saddle. Turn right and you'll find the Mark Trail a few feet later on the left. The trail descends into Newton Canyon and then quickly climbs back out to where this section ends at the Latigo Canyon parking lot. You'd almost never know it, but in November 2018, this canyon, Newton Canyon to be exact, was absolutely incinerated from green nirvana to ashes. That was the Woolsey Fire, and it burned nearly 100,000 acres and took three weeks to extinguish. Which makes me think of a rather philosophical point to ponder while you're hiking this backbone trail section. I suspect a lot of us hike through places like this and they just seem to change slowly, if at all. But maybe that's an illusion. A beautiful canyon like this can be transformed overnight with one huge blaze. But it always seems to bounce back. Section 5 begins at this parking patch off Latigo Canyon Road and ends about seven miles later at Ensignal Canyon Road. Cross the road to the trailhead and descend into Newton Canyon. The Woolsey Fire's devastation has become less apparent. Now it looks more like two weeks after a bad haircut. The invasive black mustard is everywhere, sometimes crowding out native plants. Blackened coast live oaks and walnuts still line the trail, and it's clear the fire didn't altogether kill the trees. At 2.4 miles, the trail descends steeply to Canaan Doom Road. Look to the left for the trailhead and descend into Zuma Canyon. The word Zuma is the Chumash native word for abundance. By coincidence, Zuma is also a variation of an Arabic word meaning peace. And that's what you'll find as you descend the canyon, an abundance of peace. In about a half a mile, you'll reach Newton Stream. The bridge is new, the last one burned up in the Woolsey Fire. From the creek, begin climbing out of the canyon. More peace. After about five total miles of hiking, there's a junction with a peaceful Zuma motorway. Turn left and climb for a minute or two before spotting the marked trail on the right. From here, we ascend a short distance and then traverse a ridge above Trancas Canyon. In 2016, 40 acres of this land was donated by California's former governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and fitness pioneer, Betty Wider. That contribution helped ensure the Backbone Trail's completion and make it a true through hike. Nearing the end, the trail drops into Trancas Canyon for a few minutes of, ah, tranquility. And then it climbs back out often under the midday sun. Cross Ensignal Canyon Road carefully and join this short spur trail to the parking lot. One of the things I like about this 11 mile section of the Backbone Trail, number six if you're counting, is it manages to navigate a route where human development seems incidental to the natural landscape. As you walk through elfin forests and past seemingly untouched slopes of chaparral, scrub oak, and monkey flower, it's a feeling of almost pristine wilderness, even if it really isn't. And the hiking is relatively easy, the air is clean, and the views are amazing. That's all that really matters. The section starts at Ensignal Canyon Road and ends at the Mishimokwa parking area. Directions to both are in the description. The Ensignal Trailhead is just past the restrooms and ascends without much effort on your part above a canyon.
After a little more than a mile, you'll come to Mulholland Highway, which you parallel for a short distance before crossing it at a signed trailhead. From here, it's a pleasant climb made easier by multiple switchbacks. Now keep in mind, the single track trail was built for both people and bicycles, sometimes with little room for one to pass the other. After 2.5 miles and 600 feet of climbing since crossing Mulholland Highway, you'll reach the Etz Malloy Motorway, which was named after an early settler. The road continues for about 1.5 miles with views to both the ocean and Westlake Village. And then you leave it at this junction where the backbone heads off left, eventually dropping to Yerba Buena Road, which you cross. Now, by the way, you have left Los Angeles County and have entered Ventura County, which at this point seems like an arbitrary distinction. You might have noticed how little shade there's been so far. Uh, the next four and a half miles are just as sunny. The trail climbs to an easy traverse of Mount Triumpho and non-stop views to the ocean. Notice along the way how the sandstone outcroppings have disappeared, replaced by volcanic rock. The trail reaches a high point of more than 2,400 feet and gently descends in and out of canyons before quickly climbing to the parking lot at Mishimokwa. I think a lot of hikers will find a 17-mile day of physical challenge, especially in the mountains. But then again, years later, those same hikers will tell tales of this killer day as if it was fun, good experience. So as you travel this final segment of the backbone, expect tons of enjoyment as you go from the highest point on the trail to the lowest. The segment starts at the Mishimokwa trailhead and ends at the Ray Miller trailhead at the ocean. You do have the option of splitting this segment in half, which I offer in the description. But in the long run, you actually hike more miles. And strangely, I don't think it'll be as much fun. From the parking lot, cross Yerba Buena Road to the trailhead and begin climbing. It's a healthy ascent knocking off a thousand feet in just 1.7 miles. In about a third of a mile, you'll come to this trail junction where the Mishimokwa Trail goes straight and the Backbone Trail makes a hard left uphill. Now, you might be thinking Mishimokwa sounds like, oh, I don't know, maybe a local Chumash native word. It isn't. It's actually a mythical bear that makes a brief appearance in a 19th century epic poem called Song of Hiawatha. I guess someone liked the name? In less than a quarter mile, you hit a junction with a sandstone peak trail which heads left to a parking lot. Continue going up where along the way, you'll pass the volcanic Echo Cliffs to the right. In another 1.2 miles, the trail crests, and you have to make a sightseeing decision. Knowing you still have about 15 miles to go, you might just continue on the trail. But for a few minutes of climbing, you can reach the top of 3,104 foot high sandstone peak, the highest point in the Santa Monica Mountains. It's worth it. The official name of this peak is Mount Allen, that guy up there, who was a Boy Scout honcho from the 20th century. But somehow or other, sandstone stuck. Not sure why, this rock is actually andesite, which originated as molten lava called breccia, 
which comes in various sized chunks and is spewed about. It's not sandstone. Back on the trail, you now have a 3,000 foot elevation loss over about seven miles. No problem. This is probably the most spectacular section of the Backbone Trail, and the descent is easy on the knees and the eyes. Less than a mile from Sandstone Peak, you come to another viewpoint. Again, it's worth a few minutes to climb up and take in the scenery. Another short mile goes by and you'll come to this junction with the Tri-Peaks Trail. Continue straight on the backbone, also known at this point as the Chamberlain Trail, which enters the Boney Mountain State Wilderness. Now if you have a dog or you're riding a bike, you have to stop here. Neither are allowed. While you descend the slopes of Boney Mountain, the next point of interest is this. Chamberlain Rock, a.k.a. Split Rock. It was named after Henry Chamberlain, who once owned the property here. Not sure if he started the rumor that if you slide through the crack from west to east, all of your demons will be cleansed. Sounds like a corny roadside attraction for tourists. But I did it anyway. The route gets drier as you keep dropping eventually reaching this junction at 6.6 .6 total miles and a handwritten sign directing you to what will become Blue Canyon. As you descend, look up to get a deep appreciation for how much elevation you've lost over the last five miles. The trail reaches a rocky stream bed where the path briefly disappears. Veer to the left and it will come back. Now after 8.5 total miles, you'll come to the Danielson multi-use area where there are shaded picnic tables, restrooms, and running water. Continue past this to the paved Big Sycamore Canyon Road and turn left. In a few minutes, the pavement ends and you're back on dirt. After about 1.5 miles on the road, Watch for an easily missed junction where the Wood Canyon Vista Trail comes off the hillside above you on the right. There's a shaded picnic table just beyond this if you need a rest. Turn onto the trail which climbs and loses about a thousand feet over the next 6.4 miles. Now if it's a hot day, you'll definitely feel it. But when the ocean breezes are kind, this is a fairly pleasant section with views back to Boney Mountain and where you hiked earlier in the day. Along the way, the trail connects up to the Overlook Fire Road and heads left. And finally, you'll start to see the ocean. Consider yourself near the end of your journey. After about two miles on the road, you'll come to this trail junction. Turn right, often descending into a full ocean wind. The single track heads down the ridgeline for 2.7 miles. At the bottom of the descent, you'll come to where you parked your shuttle car. Okay, maybe by this point you've rehearsed some sort of clever philosophical conclusion to tell your friends or partner. Ah, uh, I know it's about the journey and not the destination, but I'm sure glad we're done. 
Okay, maybe that needs a little work. In any event, feel good about your accomplishment and the persistence you showed to pull it off. And if there's still time in the day, maybe find your way to the beach. Dip a toe in the ocean to make your journey complete. And then relax. The 68 miles are now behind you. So if you enjoyed this video, camp on that subscribe button. Each week I post a new hike. And in the meantime, don't get lost. <laughs>